When I was about 13, I'd have to say, my brother had their video games and that never really interested me. The first time I used a flight simulator was when I was training for my private pilot's license. I first got my start in aviation. I was either 12 or 13 years old. I had bought the uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator. So my dad, who saw my face light up every time we drove by airports, he's the one that got me my first simulator so that I had something to do. My instructor suggested that I use a flight simulator to uh, practice the moves that we were doing in the aircraft, and it did wonders. And I fell in love with it. I didn't know what I was doing at the time. I was terrible. But after a while, I started catching on, which really sparked my interest in aviation. From there, I took flying lessons, got involved with Civil Air Patrol. So now as a flight instructor, I urged my students to do the same thing. And from there, my aviation career took off. My name is Brooke Reese. I'm a propulsion system test pilot, and I flew, or I tried to fly, my first plane in Flight Simulator. My name is Charles Powell. I'm a certified flight instructor for Dubois Aviation. My name is Captain Parrish Wilkins. I'm a captain for United Express Airlines, and I got my start in aviation through a flight simulator game. Hey there everybody, and welcome back. So today I'm really excited to be taking a first look with all of you at the newest offering in the flight simulation genre, 
which is Dovetail Games Flight School. Now we know that Flight School is the first sim to come out of two that it released on the timeline from Dovetail Games, and this one's really intended at an audience that is new to virtual aviation or aviation as a whole. So when we think about what this product is and what it isn't, what it is is supposed to be a simplified, streamlined, stable, and accessible way of folks who have somewhat of an interest in aviation to have a great entry point. It's priced appropriately, and it also is free of a lot of the things that have plagued a lot of our experience with flight simulation in the past, from instability to out-of-memory errors to complicated add-ons. It's really been handcrafted to be an easy way of getting into flight simulation. And of course, we know that later on in the year, there'll be a full-blown flight simulator known as Dovetail Games Flight Simulator, which will allow those folks, if they choose to stay in the genre, to continue to pursue their passion for real or virtual aviation. So with that said, in our first look today, we'll really be spending time in the sim, not so much doing a review because this is an alpha product. Um, it is not the final product that will be released at the end of May. You know, I've had this for quite some time and been playing with it for quite a bit, and I feel as though now I have enough to be able to share with you guys some of the interesting points that I found uh, with it. I'll show you guys the interface, show you guys how the sim works, We'll look at the new aircraft along with the new uh, custom-made sceneries, and uh, we'll even take a little flight in one of the aircraft. So as I said, it will not be a full review as of yet. I'll be reserving that for the actual sim that will be released later on in the month of May. So let's go ahead and jump on in. So as you guys can see here, by the way, I love the color choice. Um, here we are in the sim. And first thing we need to do is register. So we'll just say Jordan King. Email address, we'll put Jordan at king.com. All right. And first name, Jordan. Last name, King. And from the US. Great. So first thing we get to do is select our home airport. So by default, it's one of the flight school airports. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and change this to be my uh, real world uh, home airport, which is uh, K-A-J-O, Corona Municipal. Great, and there she is on the map. So we'll go next. And now what we'll do is, uh, I'll get this thing into full screen here. So uh, let's start there. So under the graphics options, you guys can see a number of different things. I'm using my Jetline PC today, so uh, I'm using a GTX 960. And uh, the footage that you guys will be seeing today will be using this computer, which, you know, let's make no mistake, is no slouch, but it's also not a terribly expensive PC. So it should be a good indication of how a lot of uh, gamers' PCs will uh, work with this sim. Let's go ahead and change the resolution, and let's go full screen. All right, much better. So here in the visual settings, uh, you guys can see that uh, it does have multi-monitor support, which we do not need. And if you do have it on, there's an option for bezel size or bezel correction, which is something that has been uh, for a long time requested in the flight simulation community. Um, so it's great to see that's built in. Show aircraft labels, we don't need that, but you can if you'd like it. Um, all these settings are maxed out. Great, let's go on over to sound. And you guys can see here, just sound devices. You can also see that there is some music that you can cycle between. It's pretty much, you know, the same sort of theme, but just with uh, different instruments and a slightly different tempo. Next up, we'll go to controls. And so the controls menu looks uh, a little bit different than um, you may be used to. First of all, one thing you won't see here in the controls menu is track IR. So actually, as we're talking about track IR, let's uh, go ahead and go back to the desktop real quickly. And I'll show you guys one important thing about Track IR. To use Track IR with Dovetail Games Flight School, it's very easy. You just open up your Track IR interface, check for game updates, and it has been updated. Great. And it wants us to restart Track IR. Now, if we launch Track IR before the sim, we'll have full Track IR support, and uh, we'll be good to go. All righty. So, um, here, Back in the controls, you guys can see that the menu does look different, as I said. So you have up here, calibration, 
buttons and keys and axes. And then you can select your controller type down here. So you guys can see my Pro Flight yoke is working just fine, as are my rudder pedals. And you'll see the event categories, which is basically the sub segments of um, different control inputs and or buttons and keys that you can assign um, to different parts of the simulator. So all of the familiar things are there, they're just uh, arranged a little bit differently. So let's go ahead and calibrate our yoke now. So we'll go ahead and go on down to axes for the SciTech Pro Yoke. And that all looks good. We'll adjust our throttle axis. So we'll assign that to X rotation. And then we'll also go ahead and uh, set our flap axis to the Y rotation. And I know we'll have to invert that, so we'll invert it. All right, and uh, let's also go ahead and take a look at our uh, pedals here. So uh, this always happens in legacy FSX games, so it always wants to assign elevator and aileron to the rudder pedals as well as throttle. So the rudder axis is fine, and then we'll just assign our toe brakes. All right, and that's all done. So that's pretty much it. That'll be enough for us to be able to control our aircraft while we are uh, up in the air. All right. So uh, w one quick other thing that I would say that I thought was a pretty cool feature is uh, if you look under buttons and keys, if you notice here on the right hand side, there is a fast and also a slow option as well as none. And that's basically the new version of repeat speed. So instead of having to deal with that slider, you can just select if you want the repeat speed or the sensitivity of the input to be fast, slow, or uh, just to have a uh, single incremental um, input. Over here we go to realism, and realism, you guys can see easy, medium, and hard. Easy looks like this, hard looks like this, and uh, auto mixture is still on for hard, so we'll go ahead and take that off, and uh, looks good to me. Also you have your private, your pilot profile, name, where you're from, your language of choice, etc. And uh, then the credits. Real quickly, we'll go back here to the uh, general settings. You guys can see here, uh, show login ATC window, all that good stuff, pilot voice. There are some new pilot voices, which uses a different form of voice emulation. Um, this is supposed to have expandability for the um, eventual final sim. Um, right now, it's a little bit on the strange side, uh, mostly because, well, number one, it may be fixed by the end of the alpha, or the end of the beta, I should say, but uh, it, has a little, it has a few quirks right now. Um, also, unit of measurement, so the U.S. system, the Imperial system, hybrid feet millibars, which is actually pretty accurate to what's used in the real world, so we'll change that, and then, of course, just metric. Last but not least, um, over here are uh, just the credits, all the folks who worked on the team. Now, one interesting thing I saw here that I'll be referring to later is this. Thanks to the following organizations. So, uh, I think that's actually a typo. Organist, organist stations. Uh, Skyhook Games, not sure what they do. I think they're like a consulting firm or something. Orbix, we all know who they are. And then Turbulent Design, some of you may know who they are and some of you may not. They make some projects for Orbix, but they, they're a relatively small but extremely talented um, airport and scenery developer that uh, I think it'll be apparent how they uh, supported this sim. So, all right, there we are in the settings. Now, let's take a quick look at the namesake of the program, Flight School. And so here, you'll see a couple of things. You'll see that there are two primary flight schools. One is Waltham Flying Club in London, England, and the other one is Ingle Eagle Pilot School in Prescott, Arizona. So there are two separate flight schools for a very specific reason. One is kind of the entry level flight school where you learn the essential basics and the other one is more of the uh, advanced parts of pilotage so here at waltham you have uh, these lessons take off straight and level climbs and ascents turns to headings approach and landing and then you finally take your check ride for the light aircraft pilot's license so these are all the very very basic parts of flying because of that you're flying a piper pa18 super cub which is a little bit of a more nimble, slow flying and forgiving aircraft uh, to help you learn these essential skills. Now, once you're done there, you can also continue on to Prescott, Arizona. We'll be flying the Piper PA-28. 
And in these lessons, things get a little bit more advanced. You work on the traffic pattern, emergency landings, steep turns, power off stalls, slow flight. That was my most hated part of my real world license. Um, radio navigations, you do a solo cross country, just as you would do in real life, night flying, and finally you do your check ride for the private pilot's license. This is actually pretty true to flight training in real life. Um, of course, it can depend based on, it can vary based on your CFI, but uh, it's pretty true to the curriculum course that most uh, CFIs adopt. Now, one quick thing about these two schools is that they are not default um, flight simulator airports as you would see in FSX or in Prepared. They've actually been completely custom modeled. And don't worry, we'll be taking a look at those custom sceneries, those handcrafted sceneries in just a moment. Trust me, you want to see that part because they are absolutely beautiful. All right, next up, we'll look at the missions. So there are a bunch of different missions ranging from, I believe blue is easy, green is kind of medium, and then red is hard. And they cover icing conditions. Um, this one is uh, you run out of fuel. You have this one where you're lost in the middle of some sort of thunderstorm trying to find this little airport in the middle of nowhere. This one, uh, you have a malfunctioning engine. These ones, you're ferrying passengers, et cetera, et cetera. You get the idea. There's a total of nine, um, and they're still pretty fun. Where even an advanced simmer like myself found a little bit of challenge in these. And then, last but certainly not least, is free flight mode. So here we get a first look at our two aircraft. And... Just like the airports, don't worry, we'll be taking a closer look at both of them um, in just a bit. But you can select your two aircraft here, the Piper PA-18 or the Piper PA-28 Cherokee. You can select their liveries. I was actually confused what the difference between these two were, and just one has um, wheel fairings and one does not. And we'll look at the liveries for the Super Cup. So three American deliveries, one European one. All right. So from there, you would go on over here to the flight planner. And so with the flight planner, you can see that we have the full world at our disposal. Now, it may not look like there's a whole lot of airports at first, but as you zoom in, you can see that more and more airports start to populate until the map is absolutely littered with them. You can also see if you zoom in even further, you can see uh, VORs and NDBs. Um, you can see all these other little airports, um, and uh, they're also um, categorized by hard surfaces, soft fields, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you can find just about any airport your heart desires um, here on this map. So to fly, you would simply look at uh, which airport you want to start from and go to. So let's say I wanted to go from here at uh, Collin County Regional, and I wanted to go on over to Frisco. I could do that, but let's say I wanted to stop by the uh, Bronze Dallas NDB first. I could click there and go to Frisco. I could also just manually type them here and map out my flight plan there. Also, you can select the time and season, of course. You can set up weather. You can save the flight plan, and you can load an existing one that you had. And that's it. You would log the plan, and you would prepare for takeoff. So with that said, let's take a moment to look at some of the new handcrafted airports that you'll, fly, that you'll find and be enjoying in Dovetail Games Flight School. So let's go ahead and start our look right here where you can see the ERU, Embry-Riddle University down on the ground, which is KPRC in Prescott, Arizona. Now, one common thing you'll see across all of the airports we'll be looking at today, which are three out of the, I believe, four or five custom crafted aircraft airports that you'll see, is that they are absolutely gorgeous. And this is why I think Turbulent Designs had a hand in them. There's a lot of clutter. Um, there's a tremendous amount of detail, not only from the airport itself, but to the buildings on the other side of the airport perimeter. This amazing runway that you see here, the taxiways, the runway, the dirt, um, the clutter, the grass, everything's there, and it's absolutely beautiful. Of course, the screen space ambient occlusion that is globally in implemented in flight school helps as well. But, I mean, these are pay-wear quality airports, 
and uh, they're beautiful. So next up, we'll look at White Waltham, which is the European flight school that you'll be experiencing as uh, one of the two primary flight schools. You can see here they have some amazing custom hangars. Um, this one does not have a paved runway, but you can see that this dirt runway is paved, um, I'm sorry, is blended extremely well with the grass. Um, you can see that there's uh, the same amount of detail in the airport terminal, the static aircraft scattered around the airport, and also these uh, cool looking office buildings that are right outside of the airport perimeter. And then last but not least, we will take a look at EDRK, which is actually in uh, Germany. I was not expecting this one. So this one's beautiful. It sits up, sits up on this uh, really cool looking plateau. And uh, it has all the same things we saw in the um, other sceneries. An amazing runway, which, although it's paved, looks significantly different than the one we see in Prescott. We have uh, these really cool-looking hangars that have obviously been custom-modeled, along with a kind of industrial-looking area um, outside of the airport perimeter. So hats off to Dovetail Games and what I think is uh, Turbulent Designs, who made these because if these are the um, bases of our flight training and probably some of our challenges, this will create a really great immersive experience. So next up, let's take a look at one of the aircraft. And uh, we're going to start by looking at the outside of the PA-28 uh, Piper Cherokee. And I'll tell you this, this thing is absolutely beautiful. You can see that uh, not only from the extremely high poly model, that uh, Dovetail Games has developed here, that you get some amazing reflections, some great lines, some great curves, some amazing bump mapping, all the way down to the details of things like the uh, wheel fairings and the brakes on those wheels. Even from the outside looking in, you can see an absolutely gorgeous virtual cockpit and even a eerily well-modeled virtual pilot uh, that's sitting there staring at you. Luckily, You'll be uh, in the plane most of the time, so you don't have to deal with them too much. So with a look at that, let's go ahead and jump on in the cockpit of the PA-18. And uh, let's have a little flight with her. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and get our flight started. So uh, we're going to go to free flight mode. Um, we'll go and fly the PA-18, and we're going to fly into Europe. So we'll uh, take the uh, European livery. And let's uh, see where we're going to go. So we'll back out, go over to Europe, and uh, we'll look at England. And I want to fly along a coast, so let's find a little coastal airport here. So here's, mm, maybe not that one, uh, St. Nathan to Cardiff. Let's do that one. So St. Nathan to Cardiff, we'll do it uh, during the daytime. And we'll make it a little bit later in the evening. And, yep, I think that should be a good time. So, now let's uh, go ahead and take off. All right, so here we are uh, at St. Athen. Here's our uh, little plane here on the runway. And uh, just go ahead and uh, click this fly button and get the party started. So let me go ahead and adjust my view first. So my uh, track IR is up and running. And let me just center it out. All right, there we go. So uh, now that that's done, let's uh, take a quick look around. You can see the interior of this plane is actually modeled relatively well. I did notice that most of the click spots did not work. Um, a couple of click spots do uh, in regards to the engine and things of the sort, but mostly it's a, it's a looker more than uh, <laughs> some sort of an A2A simulation. Um, the uh, instruments look good as well, the pack, and uh, she's uh, definitely nice to look at. It's one of the click spots we have, uh, the nav lights, we'll go ahead and turn that on, and I think we're just about ready to go, so let's give her power. Looks like the tail wheel is rising, so we'll pull back. All right, and we are off. So we'll go ahead and climb on out here. I uh, should note that uh, Dovetail Games, uh, in their beta process, is working on the flight models, so we won't be uh, testing stalls or anything like that right now. This is still an alpha. 
but we're just going to kind of enjoy the flight and you know, fly around and take a look at the scenery and enjoy the interior of the aircraft. So out there is a coastline, and uh, you can actually see the airport that we put on our flight plan right there to the right, so it's not exactly hard to navigate to. And we're going to make a little turn, and we'll look at the scenery a little bit before we uh, make our way on down. So this looks about good. I'll start to uh, kind of level out our climb here in just a minute, but um, we'll look outside. And you can see that the uh, Orbix uh, FTX Global looks really, really good from where I'm sitting. Um, there's no clouds in the sky today. You know, clouds, I've noticed, are a little bit of a hit or miss. Um, sometimes they look really good, and sometimes they look a little bit spotty, as they do in default FSX or P3D. Um, definitely I'll be looking forward to a weather engine, but the one thing that does not look, uh, you know, like it needs much work is that FTX Global. It looks absolutely beautiful down there, extremely sharp. Everything's uh, 40, 96 textures, so it looks really good. There's a little bit of uh, autogen popping, um, which is an old uh, FSX issue. I know that Dovetail Games is working on that um, and uh, having it blend in a little bit more seamlessly. I don't know if that's going to make its way to flight school or if it's something that'll be reserved for the full uh, flight sim later on in the year. Um, doesn't necessarily take away from the immersion, but still something that uh, I would like to see kind of rectified in the future. Beautiful coastline. There's our old airport. And uh, I'll tell you what, I cannot wait to see add-ons in this sim because, um, you know, it looks great. I think it looks really, really good. Um, and having add-on airports would be uh, kind of the icing on the cake when we uh, get the full-blown sim uh, later on in the year, but the uh, airports we took a look at earlier um, definitely do the trick. I was just noticing that smoke over there. It's all black. I, uh, I don't know if that's a texture issue or if it's supposed to be black smoke. So, we uh, are making our way on in. We definitely look like we're high, so uh, we'll start bleeding speed here and bleeding some altitude. I'm going to drop flaps here in just a minute. And yeah, it looks like we're centered up. doesn't look like we're going too fast. But I know this uh, Piper stalls um, at a pretty low speed, so we want to bleed as much speed on the way down as possible. So we'll take in that notch of flaps. And you can see the airplane kicks up as it would in real life. And then uh, we'll drop another one. I mean, the uh, textures still look great, even down from this low. Alright, and it looks like we're just about there. When I'm uh, done with this landing, we got a little bit of rudder in right now. Um, when I'm done with this landing, uh, we'll take a look at VAS and just see what it's doing. I mean, it's obviously extremely smooth, um, but I uh, just wonder how much VAS we soaked up. Because um, these ground textures look like they're pretty high up there. So here we go, and over the numbers, flare it out, and stall her down. There we go. Not too bad, not too bad. Um, flight logged, hours, 40, is that 47 minutes? There's no way we were up there for 47 minutes. All right, well, we're down around the ground, safe and sound. And uh, reflections look really good. I know that uh, cockpit shadows are going to be coming out, but let's look at Vass. So, uh, look at that, 7,000 megabytes, 7 gigabytes of VAS. It's insane to think about that after all these years of having OOMs and flying 32-bit programs. Um, it's pretty cool. And it's still chugging along. I mean, it's not like it's uh, taking a beating on the system. So, anyways, let's bring up the flaps, and uh, I'll take another flight. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, the time with me today, and uh, look forward to seeing you guys very soon. Everybody take care.